Carlos, everyone, and I hope you enjoyed the parallel sessions. Um, really some, some forward thinking and, and interesting discussions were had there. And I'd like to welcome you all to the closing plenary, where I'm very pleased to introduce or reintroduce Ramon Fiestas from Buick, our, our chair of Latin America, Herman Corredor, executive director of CER Colombia, a local association partner, and big bienvenido to Alfonso Blanco, executive director of OLADE. Ramon, I'll pass it to you. And thank you. We are going to be talking in Spanish. For Spanish speakers, we have the honor to count among us in this closing session a person that has been working for at least two years in a very intensive way in trying to deploy as much as possible renewable energies in the Latin American region. Our life has crossed a, a couple of years ago, and we have very close relationship with Olade, whom we collaborate. Recently, they carried out a study that was published at the beginning of last year on bids and the processes of uh, renewable energies in Latin America many findings have helped us to build regulations and that we have seen uh, have been carried out in different countries coming out from this study. So we want to ask Alfonso to give us some closing words for the Congress that we have held for two days. And that has been a terrific success, participation and content wise, very high participation from the most interested parties, the stakeholders, from the energy policy, all the way to matters that impact the most at this moment in time in the development, construction, logistics on these projects. And finally, we had held a session related to the development or potential development of offshore wind in Colombia. Huge interest from our audience and another panel on bilateral contracts. I wanted to hear Alfonso's insight to see what is his perspective from Latin America regarding renewable energies. You have the floor, Alfonso. Well, thank you. Good afternoon. It is noon, uh, 37 minutes past noon, so it is a great pleasure to greet you. I am so pleased to be in this space and joining you today. Thank you for inviting me to participate. As international body, we have as an approach development and energy transition in Latin America and the Caribbean. That is where we have been working as part of my agenda of the first administration of OLAVE. In, I have been re-elected for a new period that will be concluding by 2023. With our intention is to develop the largest penetration of renewable energies in Latin America and in the Caribbean. Latin America and the Caribbean is a region of the planet with more participation in their grid. The participation of renewable energies on the mix of primary energy accounts for 27%, 27, 28 80% of primary energy in the region. Due to the history of our region, hydro energy, hydraulical energy has very important share and is part of the 
energy DNA, and it is conditioned to the participation that the biomass uh, under this regime. But if we talk about non-conventional renewable energies, the rhythm, the pace, the capability of non-conventional renewable energies is inferior to the demand. And that is something that I would like to highlight. I want it to be representing a warning. The amount of energy in Latin America American the Caribbean is growing faster than the pace in which we can integrate non-conventional renewable energies. Another element that is key within the context of the energy sector in Latin America and the Caribbean is that the progress and development of renewable energies is very different from one country to another. So we have countries that have made a great progress on the systems to integrate and incorporate renewable energies to their grid, and there are others that have not advanced at all. Countries that have 100% of participation of generation of renewable energies is Paraguay, uh, Costa Rica, and Uruguay. There are almost in 100%. There are other countries that have not yet been able to incorporate an important capacity in terms of renewable energies. A lot to do in a region. Then... What are we doing? Well, we're trying to generate this drive and accelerate energy transitions and in Latin America and the Caribbean, renewable energies being the fundamental, the core part of such a process. First of all, we are working in a great amount of platforms and I want to highlight one and I am happy that Colombia has been moving towards that. We have the RELAC platform that is headed by the BID, but no, as Olade, we are accompanying that effort of something that had been presented of the, by the government of Colombia, aiming to have 70% participation of renewable energies in the installed capacity for Latin America and the Caribbean. Very ambitious goal that in a certain way is setting the need of a region of accelerating the processes to comply with environmental commitments. It is something that is fully aligned and headed to put Latin America and the region as the first in the planet. So we have to establish a regional goal that is substantial and that is what we are a company. Uh, but this is not only the development of a goal, establishing a goal for a region. This also involves to accompany the governments, the countries, the different players in the sector in order to create the necessary roadmaps to start working on the obstacles found for the renewable energies markets. They are not homogeneous throughout, across the region. We need to work specifically case by case, accompany the different specific strategies for the development of renewable markets. Something that I always highlight is the right ecosystems in order to add renewable energies as a substantial part for the energy grid 
for the countries in our region. Not all countries have developed or have those ecosystems that will enable them to include renewable energies. That's the kind of, uh, that's what we need to accompany to be able to meet that goal that we are trying to move, to push forward in Latin America. We also have a political and government commitment in order to identify a channel to renewables, a tool to, a proper tool for being in compliance and meeting the different goals. On the other hand, we have different sectors, different stakeholders in the whole ecosystem, a national level that would go along these uh, different strategies. Therefore, this includes capacity or skills development at the region, the development of different instruments from the regulatory perspective, technical capabilities and competencies development, so they can start boosting and promoting as well as developing these renewable energies in Latin America and the Caribbean. And that is why wind uh, en energy is an essential element for the development. Therefore, the last message I would like to convey for this presentation is we need to carry out a lot of efforts and with this uh, pandemic situation has given us an inheritance uh, that we need to tackle and the region is facing one of the most uh, important crisis in the last years. We are talking about sanitation and economic challenges. All renewable energies are just another engine for recovering the economy in Latin America and in the Caribbean, and we just need to keep working and provide the support so we can identify the capacity that all of these uh, transitions and all uh, renewable energies so we can get the economic recovery in the region. Thank you very much for this opportunity. Thank you very much from OLADE or OLADE for this opportunity and uh, to keep working so closely with uh, many of you here in Colombia uh, to be participating in such an important event and the great effort that it has been done from the different government levels and private sector stakeholders so we can boost renewable energies in Colombia. We just need to highlight this in our region. We also need to provide the message that these ener renewable energies in Latin America and Caribbean, despite this uh, huge crisis, they are still in the process for being install and strengthening the market, which is uh, crucial and fundamental for the development of the market. Thank you very much, Alfonso, for those words, for your message. And now that we have you here a couple of minutes, I would like to um, post a question. Or Yesterday, it was said by the regulatory authority that there was a priority for speeding up the setting of settlement of these renewable energies, and that is the flexibility of the different markets and the power markets, so we can incorporate from a variable resources energies. So I think this is something that could be forecasted in not only in Colombia, but what is your perspective from that? Uh, a month ago, we had a very rich dialogue with the government 
is something that we are developing between Bid and Olade, and that is uh, this dialogue groups for the sustainable recuperation or recovery. In that sense, it was quite clear that we need, first of all, to uh, uh, revamp our region so we can keep up with the development of renewable energies from these disruptive technologies and the need for digitalizing the sectors, especially the power sector. Therefore, there is a need to revamp everything. We just need to bear something in mind. The regulatory banks in Latin America and the Caribbean were designed, developed, and implemented in the 90s. So this was a complete different context from today, talking about demands and supply. So we just need to also bear in mind that uh, what we have from renewable energies, the dis gener distributed generation and all the consumers and producers are were more strict. So there is a more dynamic link between these energy flows. However, the, oh, therefore, there is a quite an important change in the consumer's patterns. That's why we need, and it's urgent, to have this uh, re or remodernization at the regulatory framework. And this is something that we are seeing and is being perceived in the different markets in the region. On the other hand, we just need to enable and promote the uh, incorporation of key aspects that today are considered within the regulatory design of the sector. For instance, the storage, the payment for services or complementary services, the, the usage of, of uh, networks and grids for the generation of energy. So there are many other challenges that are being given due to the huge transformation that is uh, going on in the energy sector and mainly in the uh, power sector. Thank you very much, Alfonso, for your words and the clarification that you have given that we are now uh, prepared to start working. So this uh, cooperation between the private and public sector could be stronger. Now we have Germán Corredor, so he can provide some uh, closing words and he can close this important event for the two past days. So Germán, the, the microphone is yours. Thank you very much, Ramón. You're very kind. First of all, I would like to thank all attendees I uh, would like to thank speakers and panel members, as well as sponsors for this event. Otherwise, this event couldn't be possible. I would like to thank all the support given by the GWEC or GWEC and, and all civil servants that were supporting this event. There's no doubt that there has been a couple of days quite interesting with very significant inputs from the Colombian authorities. We started with an international context of the economic input for the different uh, wind projects for the future, the whole impact, the positive impact in terms of an, uh, employment, uh, uh, resources generation at the local and national level. In that sense, I think we have addressed the different topics that in the Colombian case were more concerned about or we would like to solve in the short run. So the first projects in the first uh, tender bid processes uh, are being set in place. So we have all these logistic aspects as Ramon has mentioned, some minutes ago, we have environmental issues, we have social issues, 
we have all these previous uh, surveys and consultations, not only for services, but for the transmission and connection lines of all these projects. We have come across some important announcements, such as the Environmental Ministry has said that they are going through these uh, reference terms for the environmental impact. This is something that we have started with Ser Colombia and with the ministry, and we can see the result of that in a proper uh, process for the project. That will be very important for facing this uh, such an important issue on wind and sun uh, power energies. We have seen how the transportation sector uh, has been working in terms of logistics and for delivering uh, the loads or cargoes from point A to point B and to take the different projects, all the, these different pieces of equipment, what they are required. We have also seen with these new market schemes or patterns, as well as the different mechanisms for purchasing uh, with the different proposals made for bilateral contracts or agreement based on uh, resolution 114, we could see in the short run how this uh, mechanism is going to be approved and maybe next year for these tender bid process mechanisms that has been presented. So we are making a progress, a quite an interesting progress, and we are going to um, a deeper real transformation in our market facing all these renewable energies. Yesterday, some of the reforms to the market had been announced in the short run for creating this intermediary market that is going to be a bonding market. Some other reforms that uh, have gotten very good results for better efficiency for these renewable energies and everything related to the flexibility that is needed. So all these projects with variable sources could be backed up and could have a better usage as much or as more efficient as possible and quite feasible day by day. So we also had a financial analysis for uh, that sense. And in that context, we saw a very complete overview of what's going on with uh, renewable energies, especially with wind energy in Colombia. I think we are quite optimistic uh, from all these uh, discussions, knowing that all these projects are moving forward. And while there are still many other aspects to cover or uh, problems to solve, we know that we are going to make it. This is like the general conclusion of this event, and I think this has been a quite a positive event, and we hope that next year we could have how we can discuss how these projects are being doing and to take some recordings in video of what is going on with all these projects in terms of uh, the construction. There's nothing else to say. I would like to thank all participants on all the once uh, we're in the organization and to wish that the next year event is still better and providing uh, a lot for the development of renewable energies, mainly the wind power. I also would like to announce that, that from the association that we have created, we're working hand in hand in this and other topics that are of our interest. Thank you very much. I would like to pass the floor to Emerson for closing our event. Thank you very much once again to everybody. Gracias a todos. Um, I'd just like to, to echo uh, those, those thanks from, from Herman and Ramon, and also just pick up on, on Alfonso's point about the target of 70 percent renewable energy in Latin America as a goal. This is something that sounds very ambitious, but we believe it's possible and it would really show regional integration um, is, is possible and also really propel South America and Latin America as uh, a leading region for renewable energy across the globe. And we know that Colombia will play a strong role in that. So I want to thank you so much, Alfonso, Ramon and Germán, 
um, for the closing plenary. Some, some really interesting closing thoughts. Um, thank you again to all the participants. And, and I think a, a special thanks to all the, the different um, government ministries from Colombia to have attended the various sessions, seeing that alignment and openness and willingness to debate between industry and government public private dialogues are very important. And we see that as a very encouraging foundation on which to build on. This wraps up our conference program, but we still have three more sessions and side events to go. So while this is potentially the official close, I would encourage you to, to stick around. We have the in the sessions area. So this is we're in the stage area. In the sessions area, we have Grupo Energia Bogota's technical breakout session on the role of the transmission network in the energy transition. And two more side events from our platinum sponsor, Siemens Gamesa Renewable Energy. One is a comprehensive review of, of their services and the other one focusing on technology. Please, uh, please feel free to continue using the networking function and, and follow up with any panelists or, um, or, or speakers that you have any questions with. And the virtual expo is still there for your perusal. So once again, we had over um, 700 participants from across the globe attending this event, showing both the national interest, but also the international interest in Colombia as a wind market. And we feel this is only the beginning. As a reminder, all the sessions have been recorded and will be available on the Columbia Wind Power website tomorrow along with any presentations. And thank you everyone for attending over the past two days and we will meet you in the sessions area for the final um, for the final discussions and presentations of the event. On that note, I will close it and thank you once again to all who came on board.